as agents, this is an opportunity to make hay when the sun shines, like the article about the lenders, and sell as many houses as you can, be aggressive as you can, work as hard as you can, just in case, you know, just in case that you go a couple months next year without any commissions. How do most agents who don't have access to the secrets that the top agents in our industry hoard to themselves grow and prosper in today's real estate environment? That's the question. And this video podcast is the answer. I'm Pat Hyman, and welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. Rockstar Nation, this is Aaron Muchastegi. I am back with everybody's favorite host, Pat Hyben, for State of the Market uh, to catch up and see what is going on. Today's the last day of June, and what a wild like second quarter of 2020 it's been. When we think about like like news as we try to share the news, think about this the, like all the craziness that we're living in right now started like a hundred days ago. Like yeah. I remember, I remember yeah, four like months ago. Yeah, St. Patrick's Day is what I remember. Yeah. Like four or five months ago, Pat, you and I were on here in like early February. We were reading a headline about like, could coronavirus cause any damage? And we were kind of like reading that article and this was before, um, a month before it hit the yeah, US. Yeah, we thought it was going to, uh, you know, we, we thought the worst, right? We thought the companies were going to be shutting down. Yeah. Yeah. Even the time when we talked about it, we were like, this could be a big deal. We don't think enough people are talking about it. It could be a big deal. And the, but even though, even though we were thinking that the funny thing is we were thinking like it was detrimental and it was the worst, but I didn't think it was going to get this bad. Like I thought it was going to be horrible, but I didn't think it was going to be like this big of a shutdown on stuff. And uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's, it, I, I think everybody guessed or, or not that the businesses that got hurt the most was hospitality. And then other businesses that you thought would get hurt have actually accelerated. Um, luckily for us, right? A lot of the real estate businesses are, are accelerating and amplified. I mean, busier than ever. You know? Yeah, that's, that's even a couple of things we're going to talk about in the news today. But yes, everywhere that we're hearing from all the agents out there, people are busy. People are doing a lot of deals out there. People are are buying and selling houses for a variety of reasons. And I know that when this thing started too, like I thought, I thought my two Airbnb properties, I was going to have to sell them. I was like, oh my, I just lost all my Airbnb bookings. Like I'm screwed. And it turns out a couple months into quarantine, people prefer Airbnb over hotels. So now I'm fully booked out again. And the, uh, so yeah, it's, it's tough to predict how, Crisis it, it will is, impact but it's the market. weird. Uh, you know, I talked to a guy last night that's like his Airbnbs, he's had to drop the price on them 50%. And um, he said, uh, just because people are negotiating, it's kind of an odd thing. But, but, it, it's, but if you have an Airbnb in like a rustic setting, like a, in the woods or on a mountain, um, they're sold out. Right. Yeah. Like these lake homes and stuff are like sold out people paying full price or more. Um, other places like if you're downtown Boston or, or New York City or whatever, you're or or at, or a lot of places in between, you're dropping prices in half to try to rent the damn thing out. That's a, that's exactly. Well, when it first started in May, like beginning of May, I was like, all my weddings were canceled and I was like, I'm going to have to sell these houses. So I dropped my price down like a third just out of desperation. And then I started to get these, like some bookings. And then I think by mid May, end of May, people started to want to travel in. And both of my Airbnbs are, one of them is a, is a, you know, a rustic in the woods in Oregon. And then one of them is our big property in California that has like a fishing pond and alpacas. And so it's like a place where people can go like, Oh, the pools are closed at the hotel, but I'm going to come to your house and swim in the pool. Uh, I am getting a lot of questions though from people saying, what are you doing to clean these, uh, these units in between you, you know, a company that's actually like cleaning Airbnbs, right? Like, isn't it like, didn't I see you post something online about like yeah. a sanitation well, there's, business? There's a, yeah. There's a company that uh, I invested in early on um, nine years ago and I still own stock in that uh, uh, uses a, it's called Tomi, T-O-M-I. And they have a, they have a solution that is a clean, it's non-toxic, not, n- no ammonia. I won't get caught in the details, but um, that 
it kills all germs. And yeah, they're doing a lot of Airbnbs. They're doing a lot of office buildings. I mean, they're, they're, they're using more of this product in the last month than they have like in the last year. So <laughs> yeah, I bet. the, uh, well, that uh, turns out that nine years in a, in a invested in a company, maybe, maybe, uh, you're going to see that thing booming. I'm learning. Now. Yeah. Patience. That's the theme this year and theme, I think for all of us, right. It's just patience. Yeah. I wish I would have held on to my stocks. <laughs> Yeah, I sold I sold some stocks in, out of fear in the uh, and now it's like oh I guess they I were. did the same thing I I, I cleared out and, but I still think it's going to drop back down at least I'm telling myself that <laughs> that's uh, how I sleep at myself. night yeah exactly Rockstar Nation this is Aaron Muchasegi hey I hate to interrupt the current podcast that you're listening to but I am so excited to share this with you. I just finished interviewing the original host of this podcast, my good friend, Pat Hyben. Now, I got to talk to Pat about how he started his real estate career and a whole bunch of tips and tactics that he used to be successful. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go check out State of the Market number 49. On there, I get to talk to Pat about all those different things. You know, and in there too, he talked a lot about his Six Steps to Seven Figures book and training program that he built over the last couple of years. And I realized I haven't done a good enough job of reminding all of you lately about all of the resources that we built for you out there. So if you want to check out Pat's course, we've got like a three minute summary video when you go to it. It includes so many easy to follow tips that you can follow on it like a day to day basis. You get email reminders, all sorts of different things that come with that course. You find that you go to rebusuniversity.com, R-E-B-U-S, rebusuniversity.com. Look at courses. You can find the six steps for seven figures book. And really, there's a whole bunch of other courses in there too. Our normal prices used to be $1,500 or $2,000 a course. These are real deal professional courses. But now uh, during quarantine, a lot of them are priced down like 90 bucks, 95 bucks. So we slash the prices so we know right now is the time for everybody to be focusing on growth and education, especially while they're feeling like they don't have as much to do. And if you go in there and you figure like, like dude, there's a lot of different courses you want, maybe you don't want to buy the a la carte. You can go to futureofrealestatetraining.com and you can get access to all of our different courses for 97 bucks a month. I think there's a discount on there if you go a year or there's even like a lifetime option you can pay to get access to every course we've ever put on Rebus University for as long as we have it. So go check out those options, Rebus University or futureofrealestatetraining.com. All right, back to your podcast. Sorry for the interruption. So as we, as we get started with the news, the uh, I think a lot of, in general right now, there's, I mean, there's a lot of crisis and crazy stuff going on in the world. And there's a lot of, um, you know, there's riot, there's all sorts of good and bad, but there is some good real estate news out there. Uh, one of those, are these articles from Bloomberg says the U.S. new home sales surge with buyers returning to market. This just came out a week ago uh, and it just said new home sales in the U.S. rose more than expected in May with record low mortgage rates pulling buyers back into a housing market that froze up during the pandemic. Purchases of single family houses climbed 16%, the second largest monthly advance since 1992. Um, what do you think, Pat? I guess that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, but I would have never predicted it. I mean, it, it, it it doesn't make sense because you would think, I, I originally thought two things where I was proven wrong. I, would, I thought that people are going to be like, let me get rid of this Airbnb because I don't want to have this rental or whatever. Yep. Let me get rid of this piece of real estate in case you know I need money. And number two, um, now's not a good time to move because we might lose our jobs. And... Uh, the opposite has happened, right? The, the rates have gotten so low, right? Um, and inventory was already on a decline, but now inventory is like virtually non-existent. And, um, you know, uh, every agent I talked to, and I talked to, you know, many agents every week, as you do, um, it's just running around with a chicken with their head cut off. They're just in crazy market and crazy good markets. It's hilarious. All these brokerages, a lot of the brokerages got the PPP money and EIDL money and they all got a, a you know, a couple hundred, a million bucks, whatever. And, um, you know, had their best June ever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, um, not to say there again, just kind of like we were talking about with the Airbnbs, not to say that uh, there are real estate companies and real estate agents in certain areas, and I'm sure there's ones listening that are sucking wind right now or down significantly. And I think the theme that I'm hearing when I talk to the agents on the ground, 
They're like the agents that are hustling are killing it. The yeah. agents that are slackers aren't selling anything. Yeah, there okay. is. It, it is one of the, anytime inventory goes down, you have to work so much harder. Right. You, like the agents just have to work so much hard. You have to like find deals. You have to actually find somebody, you know, that, that's when the agents start writing letters and saying, Hey, I have a buyer that wants to buy a house in your neighborhood. Do you want to yeah. sell it to them? Knock on doors. Yeah. The old, like you do have to hustle to create inventory whenever inventory is low, but people want to buy. And, and the, and even, you know, part of that article said the record low interest rates had put new homes within reach of more buyers. I think new homes too, it's easier to get a lower rate because so many of those, so many of those builders actually have their own, you know, buy down programs and things like that, that they, you know, they give extra concessions, you know, for people to buy down loans if they need to, with which it's already like, I don't know what you buy a 3% loan down to or two and a half percent loan down to, but it's uh, <laughs> the, here's the thing. So I, I, let's talk about the psychological effect of it uh, or, or aspects of it, which is what I always love looking at. So I know personally, right. I've, I, built a gym in my house. I bought all this gym equipment. Um, I, you, you know, we're, we're doing all these projects, right? Built a bathroom. Every contractor I talk about is busy as hell. I don't think you could yeah. find a legitimate contractor today that's not running crazy, right? And I think it's because, number one, people have a lot more money, like I know I have a ton more money just because I haven't been going out to eat. Uh, you know, I haven't been going out drinking. I haven't been uh, going on vacation. So I'm saving tons of money and it makes me want to spend money. Right. Also, yeah. I used to get endorphin and dopamine hits by doing stuff, by going places, by traveling. Yeah. By planning parties, by um, planning events, right? Doing things, right? I think we all did, right? Yeah. Even if it's um, a play date with the kids, you looked forward to it. And all of a sudden, you don't have anything to look forward to. So then you're to scratch that itch. So you get a dopamine hit, you buy stuff, right? You buy things and it feels good. And so I think that's what people are doing. They're buying home improvements, but they're also just buying houses. They're like, why not just buy a house? You know, that's just, it just makes sense. Yeah. And uh, it's fun to do. And I also think people are rethinking their situation. They're like, you know, I don't know if this condo makes sense anymore. It drove me crazy. I, I, I'd like to get a house with a yard. Oh, I can get a house with a yard for the same payment or you know, and, and and so I think you have some of that psychological effect too. It's such a this is a great point with the with the dopamine hit part of it, right? Because you're right. Like I I've got four kids. My wife and I are used to traveling like two weeks a month. We fly to the crazy, and it is expensive to fly four kids across the world. Like you know, and so every every time you know we're used to having a couple of those a month, and now we have none. Yes, money does save up, and then you're like, how are you going to fill that? So I think you're right. People do it's home improvements, it's fun stuff, it's random shopping again. There's all sorts of other things that, you know, out there. And then as people look at their houses, right? The house is a different asset now. It is, it has always been the most important asset class, but I tell you what, when you're, when you have to spend 75% of your time in your house, or when there's a, when you have that fear that, you know, we might get locked down periodically and have to spend, you know, all day in our house every day, like right now, at least we can go out and do stuff. We can wear a mask and we can go shopping. But there was even a time at the beginning where it was like, you couldn't even do that. And um, yeah, houses are more important. So people are like, hey, they're upgrading. If I'm going to be in my house all the time, the, but you're, the contractors are super busy. Uh, we've been getting our refrigerator repaired. It's been a, a brutal thing. But every time they show up, they're on like, they're like, hey, we've been, we've, we've had like 10 jobs one. today. Yeah. <laughs> They've had 10 jobs every day because people are in their house and they actually now have, and they said they now have the time to be there for the appointments. They used to have the toughest time scheduling appointments so people wouldn't schedule a repair because they couldn't be home. They can only do it on the weekends. Well, now people can do it every day. So the part of that search, another article that, the, that you had and I had actually started doing a little bit of research on was another one from Bloomberg that says mortgage lenders make hay with loan spreads. It says the loan spreads are the wildest since 2008. And, the, and before you guys like just take, 
take that as, as fact on there. As you read the article, it just says, you know, unemployment is high, credit is tight, but interest rates are super low. And they have some lenders on here talking about, you know, making, you know, three times as much profit as they did in the second quarter in the year in these. And, and one of the quotes says, the margins in the origination business are some of the widest margins we've seen in years. Now, but I don't think that's how, lending I think used to work like that. And maybe there are some cases where it works like that, but isn't it more like it's now it's about getting paid points, it's, right? Like you reached yeah, out to some lenders. Fake, it's fake news, right? It's, I, I mean, I was upset at Bloomberg for not like putting a paragraph in here that kind of explained um, our intent of this, uh, of this article is not to say that loan officers per se are overcharging or getting greedy and charging more than they normally do. Um, they left that part out. I think by by more profit, better margins. That's all. Uh, that's all because you know they have systems in place and they're doing more loans on top of the existing system, so their profit is higher. It, it has nothing to do with what a suddenly. Um, it, it's not like Trump has loosened the Dodd Frank regulations and now lenders are uh, allowed to overcharge. I mean, I used to own a mortgage company. And one of the things that we did to attract mortgage officers was, you know, pay them 35% of whatever they could get. So if they get, you know, a $100,000 loan, if they could get three points, then they get, uh, uh, you know, a thousand, whatever, 1,150 bucks. Um, And that was allowed. And then it became, and then before that, it was, you get a half a point right? So you get a hundred thousand dollar loan, you get 500 bucks. That's all you can make. But then, but then, you know, it's 2008. Uh, I mean, as, as the bubble happened, it became looser, looser. Then after the bubble, they tightened it back up. I don't believe that they, that, that it's loosened again. Um, you know, a couple of lenders I talked to said they are actually making less per loan. And, um, in, in anticipation for this, I, I, um, texted a lender that I've known for, you know, 30 years. And I basically said, um, have restrictions loosened? How much of a profit are you allowed to make? Right. He said it, he said, no. Yeah. Period. It is a flat percentage on all loans, no shortages, no overages. Now in overages, let's say, um, I quote Aaron Amuchastegui and his family, um, two and a half percent with one point, And then I let it ride. And the next day it goes down to two and a half percent and a half a point. Guess what? I get to keep that half a point because you agreed to the one. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that's called an over. But he said there's no overages. Right? There's no overage. If that happens, I got to tell you, I got to be a damn Aaron to drop the half percent here, take it back. So, um, no shortages, no overages. All loans are paid at the same commission rate, no matter the type of loan. Then I sent him the article. Um, He says, partially true. Underwriters and processes are making more, but they're they're making more because we're doing more loans. Loan officers are making more, but they're also making more because they're doing more loans. Companies making less per loans but more overall because of the volume. So that's the real news, right? That, y- yes, but, but also real estate companies are killing it too. I mean, a lot of companies are, Zoom is killing it. Yes. There's a lot of companies that are killing it that you could write a, an article about, you know, um, type of businesses that are going crazy with the cheese whiz on profit. Um, so I, I think it's an important distinction that you made because the headline of that article made it sound like, hey, they are, you know, they're making a bunch of profit on each, they're, they're making way more, they're working less, but making more, they're gouging consumers. I mean, that's the impression that I got by the headline. And the reality is, is no, they are, they're doing a lot more deals. They're working a lot harder. You know, if you watch, the, you know, in the big short, that was back when the first crisis happened, the lenders on there are talking about like, oh, and if, and if this guy, you know, if they can't speak English, I'm going to add an extra couple of points. You know, th- that was the loans that really got cranked down after the crisis. Like you're no longer allowed to just. Yeah. And then, yeah, and then they, Wells Fargo and a bunch of, People, you know, cities. Oh, yeah, so many people got in trouble. Yeah. 
Yeah. So it's, so you, when you read, as you look at those news, everybody out there, I mean, being able to make sure that you get to listen to it. And if you see articles like that, that seem wild, send them into us, email them into us. We want to be able to, to listen to them, talk about it on the news and see if we can learn something else. Cause when I, again, when I saw that headline, it was like, Oh, they're, they're gouging prices. And the reality is, is no lenders are making more profit right now, but they are working really, really hard. And it's just, and it's, and it's probably not all the lenders, but the ones that are doing the deals. So it's important to hit that distinction. Rockstar Nation, this is Aaron Amuchasegui. Hey, I hate to interrupt the current podcast that you're listening to, but I am so excited to share this with you. I just finished interviewing the original host of this podcast, my good friend, Pat Hyben. Now, I got to talk to Pat about how he started his real estate career and a whole bunch of tips and tactics that he used to be successful. So if you haven't listened to it yet, go check out State of the Market number 49. On there, I get to talk to Pat about all those different things. You know, and in there too, he talked a lot about his Six Steps to Seven Figures book and training program that he built over the last couple of years. And I realized I haven't done a good enough job of reminding all of you lately about all of the resources that we built for you out there. So if you want to check out Pat's course, we've got like a three minute summary video when you go to it. It includes so many easy to follow tips that you can follow on it like a day to day basis. You get email reminders, all sorts of different things that come with that course. You find that you go to rebusuniversity.com, R-E-B-U-S, rebusuniversity.com. Look at courses. You can find the six steps for seven figures book. And really there's a whole bunch of other courses in there too. Our normal prices used to be $1,500 or $2,000 a course. These are real deal professional courses. But now uh, during quarantine, a lot of them are priced down like 90 bucks, 95 bucks. So we slash the prices so we know right now is the time for everybody to be focusing on growth and education, especially while they're feeling like you don't have as much to do. And if you go in there and you figure like, like there's a lot of different courses you want, maybe you don't want to buy the a la carte. You can go to futureofrealestatetraining.com and you can get access to all of our different courses for 97 bucks a month. I think there's a discount on there if you go a year or there's even like a lifetime option you can pay to get access to every course we've ever put on Rebus University for as long as we have it. So go check out those options, Rebus University or futureofrealestatetraining.com. All right, back to your podcast. Sorry for the interruption. Um, you know, quick article that I wanted to put out there, there was, um, you know, we've talked a lot about race the last few weeks, really the last your time just goes by. I guess I don't remember what day it is or where, but maybe it's, maybe it's a month now. But uh, last week, the Houston Association of Realtors they um, they said on the MLS now they are there's no longer going to use the word master bedroom, and it is going to be called uh, like primary bedroom. And because they thought that it was a fake term and, um, and there's been a lot of stuff on the internet of people taking different sides on that. And, um, but Inman put the article on here and it was an opinion from an agent that said, you know, John legend said to the Houston association of realtors, fix the real problem. And the, so the real problem, realtors don't show black people, all the properties they qualify for uh, fake problem, calling the master bedroom, the master bedroom, fix the real problem. And the, uh, you know, I, I just wanted to share this as a news piece. Right. The, I, I don't have any, you know, I don't, I, I don't have any experience with what he's with, with what they're talking about with that, but it is. Um, but I do agree that when people are trying to, I think people need to fix the real problem. I think there's a lot of stuff happening in the news right now of, of people making adjustments and, um, and I, I, I think I admire everyone for trying to fix the problem, but fixing the real problem. So didn't have much to say about that other yeah, than sharing yeah. the news. I mean, he's right. I mean, yeah, fix the real problem. And they, they, they obviously Houston Association of Realtors, if they haven't, you know, implemented any new policies or, um, you know, done something on the level of, 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 of you know, um, fixing the real problem, making sure agents get fired and make sure agents, you know, understand and um, tightening, maybe the tightening the rules um, so that it's easier to to lose your license, uh, increasing the education of realtors. There's a lot of things that could be done, Um, you know, whether that's, uh, you know, the right thing to do. It's, you know, I'm, I'm indifferent to it. It doesn't bother me, whatever. You know, it's like, okay, we'll call it something else. I'm not, I'm not, I, I, I think it's not for me to say, you know, yeah. just like if, so, if someone's offended by that, then I don't know really if anyone was ever offended by it. And most people probably never really thought about it till now. Um, but at the same time, people are offended by the Confederate statues and, and taking those down. And, and so if someone really is offended by it, then, then, then change it. But, 
you know, I'm white, so I can't say that I was offended by it. Um, so it, it's, so I'm in, I'm indifferent. I, it's just, you know, yeah, it's not our, it. yeah. Like we don't, it's, it's like, we, we don't really have a, a right to be, to have, have the right opinion on that. I think the, you know, it's just a crazy, I, I just want to share that as news because it's such an interesting world that we're living in and is directly real estate related um, that impacts MLS and other things. And, and even more so it was interesting to just see John legends, you know, addressing it and seeing, you know, everybody, you know, more continuous discussion as they try to solve problems is what people need in the, and I like the idea of just reminding people like, Hey, there's, there's a lot of ways to fix things, but let's, let's try to, if you're going to try to fix things, go deep, do policy change, make, make big things happen. Yeah. Um, you know, it's the last article in here that I wanted to talk about today that I, which I thought was, this one is really interesting because two months ago we told everybody, Hey, if you're going to be an agent right now, you have to have a 3d tour. You've got to do, you know, the Matterport tours and, and an article that came out says Matterport is facing a class action lawsuit over a lead program. And so I was reading through this article when Matterport first started, right? They would, they would sell somebody this camera and this system. And they would say, Hey, so we're going to give you the camera for 10,000 bucks. You're going to pay a monthly fee. And then we're going to send you all these people that are going to then hire you to go take the Matterport pictures. And then I think the person could charge their own fee. They could say, Hey, every time they do an inspection, they charge 300 or 500. And so it was almost like selling them a franchise. Like, Hey, we'll sell you a, a Matterport franchise. And the, and that's the, the Matterport is this camera technology that does amazing 3d scan pictures. We can walk through the house and it does this whole 3d dimension thing. It's super cool. And, um, but when they did that, so the argument that this guy's making is saying, yeah, they, they did that. You know, they sold me the camera. They sold me the subscription. I started doing all that, but they also did it to everybody else in my neighborhood and everybody else in my area. So they didn't just give it to like one person in Dallas or two people in Dallas. They tried to sell it to you know a ton of people in Dallas. So instead of giving them leads and saying, Hey, we're going to give you this technology and we're going to send you leads. They got so many people to sign up for it. Uh, you know, to me, it's like overselling a, a franchise. You know, if, if there was four McDonald's on the same street, they just wouldn't get the same uh, revenue as if there's one. Um, had you heard much about that? The, and then uh, anybody that's been heavily invested in Matterport? No, I can't say that I have. No, I don't, and I don't, you know, I wasn't aware how that, that whole system worked. Um, um, yeah. So I really can't speak on that. Yeah. It's, uh, I think it's interesting. I think it's an interesting time with just how, how deep it is for how important virtual tours are. There's more, there's more and more of them out there and more companies kind of trying it. I mean, there's a lot of little cameras that people can do, but so much of it is there, is there technology with that. So it's, I think it's going to be, uh, you know, I, I think it could be problematic for them. I, I think it's probably a, a lawsuit that maybe they will, they will settle and get out there. Um, because it doesn't, uh, you know, when you tell somebody that you're going to send them leads as part of a purchase, uh, that can be problematic. Um, I just wonder if more, uh, you know, with what we're dealing with, um, with COVID and everything else, if, if just lawsuits in general are just going to skyrocket. Yeah. Yeah. I think that the, well, anytime that people, anytime there's big economic disparity, lawsuits skyrocket. Right. Like you said, there's plenty of businesses right now. They're doing great. There's plenty of agents right now. They're doing great. There's also plenty of people out there that are really, really suffering and really, really struggling. And, and, you know, staying at home is a really hard, difficult thing for them. And, and whenever there's anguish, I think there's more lawsuits. I think there's more, more blame and, and, uh, and risk of doing business. I wonder, have you seen anything in the news about like, are there going to be right now? Some people have been worried about opening because they don't want to be sued for, you know, potentially giving somebody COVID. Yeah, but that's the thing. I mean, that's, you know, this. Do you right? think they're going to make a law that says you can't sue somebody for, for like getting you sick for being liable? Because that's some bit like. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, like, how are you supposed to like, I mean, I, I understand like, like, I I just don't see it. Right. I mean, like maybe if you knew you had it and you purposely coughed on someone and they died they could, you know, uh, you know, there might be some form of a manslaughter or something, but I, you know, I just don't know how you could sue for damages, you know, for getting sick because everybody gets, I mean, you get that germs. Yeah. Germs it's are everywhere, dude. Restaurants and, and movie theaters and, 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 you know, in Austin, right? So the Austin's been open for a couple of months. And when it, when it first opened, we got to go to restaurants and, and right now they just made masks mandatory again uh, last week. So one of the exceptions is like, while you're eating, 
But when you're walking through the restaurant, you need to wear it. And so I went to a, re- I went to a burger place last night with my family. We're outside and we're eating. They, they call my name to the front and I go in to like get some, ask for ketchup or something like that. And I had, my mask was down and they were like, you have to put that back up. You have to put that back up to talk to us. And they were, but they were worried about getting fined. I think they had set up, you know, the city saying, Hey, we're going to find people a thousand bucks per occurrence. Um, or maybe you're going to have somebody taking a picture and being like, Hey, look, there's a guy in the store, not wearing a mask. Like, endangering me. So it's just I mean, a weird time. It's a weird time. But I think the city has the right actually to do that when you think about it because this or the, the jurisdiction, because they're the ones that deal with the hospital beds, right? Like if you could, if you are rich enough that you have your own uh, hospital and you have your own hospital bed and you can have your own doctor and ventilator and all that crap, then, then, okay, well, go ahead. Don't wear a mask. Right. But if the, if the city's the one that has to deal with the, the over the, you know, they're, they're talking now, like there's not enough beds in Phoenix, Arizona, right? Like they're, they're one more day and they're going to be out of beds or something, something crazy like that. So it's like, I mean, if you got to deal with that, then you should be as a government, I believe, be able to say, okay, you know, it isn't that weird. I mean, if I got to take care of your problem because you're sick, you know, I got to, I don't know. If I gotta, running out of beds was the first real worry. Right. That was the whole reason we all went because they said like, Hey, we're going to run out of beds. So we got to do this two week quarantine thing. And then if, if one of those locations actually does run out of beds now, then you go like, when do we get to go back outside? When will life get to be somewhat, when do, when do I get to go to Disneyland? You know, like I said, my, my family is eager to travel, eager to go get out in the world. Our business is doing fine or doing well. There's wait lists for our, you know, for our houses for rent because of the housing shortage. We have people staying in hotels asking how soon they can move into one of our houses. So it's business is good, but, but man, the, uh, you know, when will life get to be somewhat like it was, especially if we run out of bed, if somewhere runs out of beds now, a hundred days into this, again, it was right now we're recording this end of the quarter. I mean, second quarter of 2020 will be remembered as the craziest quarter ever. I hope that the third quarter of 2020 doesn't get added to that list. Yeah. I don't know, man. It's, it's kind of crazy. You know, I mean, I, again, you know, I was talking to a lender going back to mortgage loans and they're like, there's no real people are rushing in to get to refinance and stuff. And he's like, there's no real rush. These rates are going to stay the same, you know, because COVID is probably going to come back and they don't, you know, in, in, as it is, right. And the government's not going to do anything drastic to like jack up rates. Uh, you know, they're going to do whatever they can to kind of make sure that we're back on track before rates start rising. Yeah. They, I think, I think rates stay down and the uh, it's, I think it's harder to get a loan. The uh, we've had, I've had people calling lenders calling us like three or four times during the loan process for employees and just saying, Hey, do they still work for you? Like they've been approved for six weeks, but we're getting ready to close tomorrow. We just need to ask you, or do they still work for you? Yeah. You know, what's interesting. Someone told me this yesterday, someone we both know well, um, they, they applied for a forbearance on their mortgage in like, you know, March, right. Mm-hmm. When this all was going on, like, you know, it was like the 10 things that you got to do, apply for this, do this. Right. So they applied for their a forbearance. They got a forbearance, which means their mortgage company said, you don't have to pay us for 90 days. Right. Yeah. But then everything was fine and you know, they didn't lose any money. So they paid the mortgage anyways. They're like, I'm just going to pay it. Cause I don't want to owe it. You know? Right. And uh, the other day it showed up on their credit report, it ding their credit. Even just though they for didn't, asking for it, even though they didn't use it because it was bank of America, by the way. So because they got approved for it and bank of America gave it to them, but they didn't use it, right? It's kind of like getting approved for a loan, but just paying it off the same day, I guess, or just not, I don't know, not taking a line of credit, even though you have it. Um, it dinged their credit report. And I don't think anybody really expected that. And I also um, I heard of someone else that you and I know through GoBundance that is refinancing their house and they got the EIDL loan and it showed up on their credit report as a um, long-term debt, you know, it, you know, let's say it's a hundred grand, even though you got 30 years to pay it back, it still shows that you, you owe somebody a hundred grand, even though it's a low interest rate, even though, you know, it's a low payment, even though, you, you know, 
whatever. It's showing up under his personal name because he applied for it with his company. Yeah. What a trip. I mean, and I think there's, I mean, if you apply for forbearance and you don't use it and it dings your credit report, that is shocking to me. And one of those fine print things, and it'll be interesting to see how that might play out over the next three to six months to nine months. An EIDL loan, if it's one of the forgivable ones, then I think that, you know, maybe it doesn't affect it if it's a non there that, that one's a, a more gray area, but I didn't think that those were going to, I did not think when they were first talking about people doing that, they didn't, they said, Hey, this won't hit your credit. This won't be this. So it's a, uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. Credit and it's actually affecting him. He can't refinance. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. I mean, cause then he'd be like, I wouldn't have done that. I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said that. I guess, uh, you know, be careful when, when we're out there trying to figure out, I mean, there were so the first two weeks of this thing, we were all in such a panic. I saw, I mean, I fire sold so many things that in hindsight, I'm like, ah, maybe I should have kept that. But you know what? <laughs> <I did> the <laughs> same thing. I fire sold two houses thinking uh, I better sell them now. Um, uh, in case I can't some, I wouldn't say I buy or sold them, but I'm, I mean, in hindsight, it's kind of like the stocks, right? We're like, damn, I shouldn't have sold all my stocks. It's the same thing, but we, we still kind of sold them in the, you know, uh, in the eighth inning of nine innings. It's not like we sold them in the first inning, right? And been like, damn, you know, yeah, we didn't, we didn't give it all away. So, you know, you know, to close, to close this thing out, if I was, if I was going to summarize kind of the, again, second quarter of 2020, I'd say when it started out, there was a lot of panic. Right now, I feel um, a lot of hope with a lot of economic outlook. Understanding that a lot of people that a lot of people are having to pivot and struggle and change businesses, but it's also hasn't impacted the. At this point, it has not impacted the economy as much or as negatively as I thought it would. Uh, but I also want to caveat that with, and maybe you'll have a correction with the jury still out. Right. We are still yet to see a lot of the different things that in the next three to six months, uh, other impacts that might happen. But right now, right now, I would say it's, it's better turning out better than expected, but still don't know about the long term. What do you, what, what's your final thought on that, Pat? Yeah, the jury's not out. I mean, that, uh, it, you know, if you have an opportunity to, you know, if you're if you're thinking about refinancing or you're thinking about eventually Buying and you feel secure about your job. I mean, it's a great time to lock in the, a crazy rate for 30 years, right? Think about how old you are now and add 30 years of that. That's when that sucker will be due. You know, that, that, that's insane that we're going to have this opportunity. I think we're going to look back on 2020 as a, a year of opportunities. So I think that as agents too, I think as agents, this is an opportunity to make hay when the sun shines, like the article about the lenders and sell as many houses as you can, be aggressive as you can, work as hard as you can, just in case, you know, just in case you go a couple months next year without any commissions. Yeah, work work hard while we can and do it in the yeah. And Pat, if people want to find if they want to find you, they can find you on on you know on Instagram, on Facebook. Tribe of Millionaires yeah. is your big book. You've been uh, you know over at Go Abundance, you guys have been just growing that thing like crazy right now. Any 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 final ways that people should get a hold of you or things they should be looking yeah, at? No, you, get, you can get a free book tribeofmillionaires.com. It's it's a, it's our new hot book. It's selling like crazy, but you can buy it on Amazon for twenty bucks, or you could buy it. It at, you get it for free at tribeofmillionaires.com. Go on tribeofmillionaires.com, get it for free. All you got to do is pay the shipping. Um, and uh, if you don't know what GoBundance is, you can go to gobundance.com. It's a, it's a business uh, group uh, for businessmen. And, and uh, we also have a women's division, but uh, we separate the sexes. Um, and uh, it's, it's just, uh, you know, we thought we were going to have a big fallout of people quitting. And uh, we actually have, you know, members joining every week because, you know, business people want to talk to each other now about how to weather the storm. And it's, it's a, yeah, it's an that, interesting that's topic. really for everybody out there, like join a mastermind. Like now when times get tough, that's the time to get, to get in foxholes with other people. And the, yeah, I remember at the, when it first started, we didn't know if a lot of people are going to be canceling their GoBundance memberships. More people are signing up. You and I were supposed to be going to Australia next month with, uh, go, with GoBundance. So that trip got canceled because they will not let anybody in the country, but uh, next year we'll get to go back. So now we're we'll, supposed to go to Steamboat Springs. I mean, um, you know, hopefully we still will. 
um, li- with limited capacity, but who knows? Yeah. Get to do some summer travel. So go abundance still hang out. So go check out Pat's book, tribe of millionaires.com. Go check out go abundance real estate rock stars. Thank you for listening, Pat. Thanks for coming back on and we will thanks, talk brother. to you some more in a few days. Thanks. Rockstar Nation, thank you for listening to Real Estate Rockstars. Listen, I need a favor. If you find this free content helpful, if you find our downloadable items from each guest helpful, please, I need you to pull out your pointing finger. Yes, the one finger that points at people and hit subscribe. Yes, subscribe. The more subscribers we get, the better we look in the ratings and the easier it is to get guests like Robert Kiyosaki, Barbara Corcoran, all the players that are on million dollar listing in the different cities. All that stuff makes it easier the more subscribers we get. So please subscribe. And listen, there's a lot of places you can leave comments. There's a lot of places you can like. We're on Facebook. We have an Instagram page. Instagram page is I am Pat Hyben. The Facebook is Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Feel free to leave us comments there. The most popular form of commenting seems to happen on YouTube. Yes, for whatever reason, it's a a very open environment. So just go to YouTube and go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio. Leave us comments there. Some of them we will read on the show. We love your feedback. So thanks, guys, and I hope you are having a great day. Oh, and also, listen, if you're going to subscribe and you haven't already left a review on iTunes, please do that too. Have a great day and thanks so much, Rockstar Nation. I really appreciate you.